Good day class. In this video, we will continue to construct and fill out the parametric table of a mechanical manipulator. So, the, the parametric, uh, the mechanical manipulator for this time is an articulated manipulator. Okay. So, for our row 1, so this is the homogeneous transformation matrix of frame 1 relative or reference to frame 0. Then for row 2, the homogeneous transformation matrix of frame 2 relative or reference to frame 1. And for frame uh, for row 3 is the homogeneous transformation matrix of frame 3 relative or reference to frame 2 okay so let's start at the first column the first column is theta okay so let's start at the base our n minus 1 frame n minus 1 and this is our frame n Okay, so our Zn minus 1 is Z sub 0, our X sub N minus 1 is X sub 0, and our X sub N is X sub 1. So theta is the rotation required to match the direction of X sub N minus 1 to X sub N, or the direction of X sub 0 to X sub 1. So let's perform the rotation theta. So, because x sub 0 is already at the direction of x sub 1, the theta is 0. Okay. But, this is a revolute joint. So, we will add a given joint variable. The given joint variable at the homogeneous transformation matrix of frame 1 relative or reference to frame 0 is theta 1. So, this is 0 plus theta 1. Okay. Next row. For the homogeneous transformation, ma transformation matrix of frame 2 relative or reference to frame 1. Okay. The Z sub N minus 1 now is Z sub 1. The, Z, the X sub N minus 1 is X sub 1. And the X sub N is X sub 2. Okay, so theta is the required rotation needed to match x sub n minus 1 to x sub n. So x sub 1 is already matched to the direction of x sub 2. So again, we will write here 0 degrees. Okay, 0 degrees plus, because this is also a revolute joint. Okay. This is again a revolute joint, like the first joint. The first joint is a twisting, at the same time, a revolute joint. Okay, the given joint variable is theta 2. We will add theta 2. Okay, so this is theta 2, sorry. So this is theta 2. For row 3, the theta is the rotation needed for x sub 2 to match with x sub 3 if we rotate at z sub 2 so x sub 2 and x sub 3 is already at the same direction so this is 0 degrees and also this is also a revolute joint so the given theta here is theta 3 or joint variable theta is theta 3 so this is our theta Okay, theta plus 1, theta plus 2. Ah, 0 plus theta 1, 0 plus theta 2, and 0 plus theta 3. So, this will help. This uh, this is what will you do if you are getting a theta of a homogeneous transformation matrix with a given joint variable theta. Okay. Next, for alpha. So, let's go back to the base. So again, our n minus 1 is frame 0, and our n is frame 1. Okay, so alpha is the rotation required to match z sub 
n minus 1 to j sub 1 at along x sub n minus 1, uh, x sub n axis. So, our x sub n here is x sub 1. Okay? So, z sub 0 is pointing upward. We need to rotate it counterclockwise to match it with the direction of z sub 1. Okay, so using uh, right hand, right hand rule, the thumb is x sub 1, the four fingers is j sub 0, the direction where you, will you, where will you close your four fingers is the direction of rotation and it's counterclockwise. So to match it with j sub 1, it will have a rotation amounted 90 degrees. Okay, so this is 90 degrees. Okay. So 90 degrees. Okay. So let me check if it's really 90 degrees. Yes, this is 90 degrees. Okay. After obtaining the alpha, you may return now the J0 axis. Okay, so unlike theta, alpha, alpha doesn't need an addition of the given joint variable theta. So for row 2, okay, our frame n minus 1 is frame 1, our frame n is frame 2. So our x sub n minus 1 is x sub 2. And our z, sorry, our x sub n is x sub 2. Our z n minus 1 is z sub 1. And our z sub 2 is the z sub n. Okay, so as you can see, z sub 1 is at the same direction with z sub 2. So our alpha here is 0 degrees. Next. Our frame n here is frame 3. Our frame n minus 1 is frame 2. Our x sub n is x sub 3. Our z sub n minus 1 is z sub 2. Our z sub n is z sub 3. So alpha is the required uh, rotation angle to match z sub 2 to z sub 3. So as you can see, z sub 2 is the same direction with z sub 3. So this is 0 degrees. Okay. Next is R. R is the distance along x sub n axis of uh, the origin of frame n to frame n minus 1. So, starting again from the base. So, along x sub n, x sub n here is x sub 1. Along x sub 1, Okay, along, along x sub 1, we have link length a sub 2. Okay, we have link length a sub 2. But, what we are getting is the distance of frame 1 to frame 0. Okay, what we are getting is the distance from frame... Uh, frame, one, frame 1 to frame 0. And, uh, okay. and x sub 1 is not at the axis of the distance of frame n, of frame 1 and frame 0. Okay? This is the axis, this is the axis of uh, the distance of frame 1 and frame 0, while x sub 1 axis is in here. So, it's very far, it's perpendicular with each other. Therefore, x the therefore the r in our first row is zero. Okay, zero. Not a sub two. Okay, because x sub one is not at the axis of the distance of frame one and frame zero. Okay, next the distance. 
of frame 2 to frame 1 along x sub 2 axis because now x sub 2 is the frame n. Okay? x sub 2 is the x sub n, sorry, the x sub n. So, the answer here along x sub 2 axis is a sub 2. Okay? It is a sub 2. If you notice, class, a sub 2 is at the left of the origin of x sub 2. So, if you think about it, it should be negative. Okay? It should be negative because a sub 2 is uh, at the left side of the origin of x sub 2. And everything at the right side of x sub 2 is positive. So, everything at the left side of x sub 2 is negative. Okay? So, if you think that this is negative, you are almost right. Okay? Negative A2 is almost negative, but this is still positive. Okay? The reason this is positive is because of the reference frame, the best, the base frame, frame zero, okay, based, uh, based, of, based on uh, what we have studied from position vector, a reference frame is the, u, is the largest frame, okay, the reference frame is the largest frame, and the uh, And the other frames and the other smaller frames are inside the biggest frame, which is the reference frame, frame zero. Okay? And base frame is, a ref is the reference frame. And x sub zero to the right is positive. Okay? And everything to the right is positive. So a sub two to the right, and a sub two is at the right side of the origin of x sub zero. Therefore, a sub two is positive. Okay. So that's the explanation why a sub two is still positive, even though it is at the left side of the origin of x sub two, because everything is inside the reference frame, the huge reference frame, the largest frame of the mechanical manipulator. Okay? So, I hope you understand the importance of the reference frame or the base frame or the world frame. Other references call this world frame. Okay? So, this is still positive A sub 2. Okay. For our row 3, so now our x sub n is x sub 3. Okay. X sub 3, the distance of, free of uh, the origin, the origin of, the origin of frame 3. To frame 2 along x sub 3 axis is a sub 3. Okay? It is a sub 3. Again, it is still positive because everything at the right side of x sub 0 is positive because x sub 0 is is the axis the x axis of the reference frame the largest frame of the mechanical manipulator okay so for the last column let's go back to the first row okay so this is the distance of frame n to frame n minus 1 the origin of frame n to the origin of frame n minus 1 along z sub, z sub n minus 1 axis. So our z sub n minus 1 axis is z0. Along it, we have 
the a sub 1 link length. So our d here is a sub 1. Okay. So j sub 1, j sub 2, and j sub 3 is pointing to the front. Okay. They are, for, they are, they are, for, they are pointing to the front. And at the front, okay, at the forward, okay, at the forward direction, we don't have a link length. Okay, we don't have a link length. A2 and A3 is at the right side along X sub 1 and X sub 2. Therefore, for our row 2 and row 3 of D, this is 0 and this is 0. And of course, because A2 and A3 is already an R. Okay. So, this is the complete the parametric table of an articulated manipulator. Okay. Thank you.